This is the fourth section of the functions and graphs chapter, and this is on inverse functions. And um, again, you've done these at GCSE. The only thing that we haven't done at GCSE, which all this sort of stuff at the top explains, is that to draw the graph of an inverse or to sketch the graph of inverse, we reflect the original graph, the original graph in the line y equals x. And you can see that here. So here's my original graph. Here's the line y equals x. Here's a reflection. Because the x and y's swap around, and because they swap around, what happens is if you've got your original function here and you've got your uh, inverse here, remember it's minus one, the domain of the original function becomes the range of the inverse and the range of the original function becomes the domain of the inverse. So if you know the domain of the original function, that's the range of the inverse and vice versa. So if a question says, for example, what's the domain of the inverse? It's probably easier to work out the range of the original function. Right, so I know we can find the inverse of a function by using function machines, but it's more powerful if we uh, write the function as um, y equals so write function as y equals so just replace the function with the uh, y equals thing then make x the subject then um, swap x and y and then after you swap x and y write as a function again or write as an inverse function so write as an inverse using the function notation yeah it's just that then allows you to uh, find the inverses of things where you, x appears twice um, it's just more powerful than just using a function machine. So we're going to use that method. So we've got h of x equals 2x squared minus 7. So the first thing is write it as y equals 2x squared minus 7. We're going to make um, uh, x the subject. So y plus 7 equals 2x squared. Divide both sides by 2. So we can write it as y plus 7 over 2 equals x squared. Now, when I square root, I know that there's a positive and negative square root, but it says in the question that x is greater than zero. So x can't be negative, which means we only take the positive square root. So that means x equals the square root of y plus seven all over two. Then we swap the x and y's round. So we now have y equals the square root of x plus seven over two. Then write as the function notation. So then we have this and there's lots of other ways of writing it as well so there we go use that method it's more powerful now this actually says by using the subject of the formula uh, in the exam you use whichever method you like so y equals 3 over x minus 1 so we'll multiply both sides by x minus 1 so we'll get y x minus 1 equals 3 We'll expand the brackets, so we get xy minus y equals 3. Um, then we'll factorise it, expand the brackets, factorise again. Uh, uh, no, we won't factorise. What we'll do is we will add y to both sides, so xy equals 3 plus y, and then divide both sides by y. So we'll have x equals 3 plus y all divided by y and then we'll swap the x and y around so y equals 3 plus x 
over x and then write it as f inverse of x equals 3 plus x over x so there's our inverse okay this one um, we're going to be now looking at the range in the domain as well once we've found the inverse so first thing is it says find the range of f of x now this is where a, a graph can be useful or you can actually just think about what happens when you start to put numbers in greater than or equal to 2 right so we're finding the square root of number the smallest number that can go in there is 2 so you end up with the square root of 0 so 0 is the smallest number that comes out as 2 increases this bit under the square root increases and in fact because 2 goes up forever you can find the square root of any number here but the minimum it's going to be is going to be um, 0 because you can actually put 0 in so and actually if I'm drawing a graph of that that would be 2 here the square root graph looks like um, a quadratic graph on its side so you can see that the range the range is going up here forever so let's just write it down now so um, f of x the range greater than or equal to zero because we've also got the greater than or equal to here in part b um, find the inverse and state its domain and range so we've already got the domain of our original function so these are going to swap over for the inverse let's find the inverse first so we'll write it as y equals root x minus 2 um, we'll square both sides so we'll have y squared equals x minus 2 then we will um, add 2 to both sides so y squared plus 2 equals x then we swap them over um, so we'll have y equals x squared plus 2 and actually if you think about it x squared plus 2 is is this graph here isn't it quadratic starting at 2 and look at that it's a reflection in the line y equals x as we said so the inverse of the function is x squared plus 2 now the range in the domain swap over so the domain of this now becomes the range of the original function of the inverse sorry and so that's going to be x is greater than or equal to 0 and the so that's the domain the range is going to be the domain of the original function so that's the inverse is greater than or equal to 2 and you can sort of see that you can see that um, the inverse graph here well x values start from 0 and go that way and the y values the domain the range goes from 2 upwards so you can see that on the sketch our function is here and in part a we want to find the inverse so y equals x squared minus 3 uh, so y plus 3 equals x squared and y um, plus 3 and we want the square root of that equals x now I know we have plus or minus but it says here that x is greater than 0 so we don't need a negative part of the square root so swap x and y around so we'll have y equals root x plus 3 so there's our inverse part b we want to sketch the inverse now it's often easier to sketch the original graph and then reflect that in the line y equals x so this is a quadratic u-shaped move down to negative 3 only when x is greater than 0 so basically this is what it's going to look like 
so minus 3 down there so that is f of x I'm going to use that to help me sketch the inverse so the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x which is going to look like this so let's do a reflection and it will go something like this so that means that this is negative 3 so there's my inverse yeah. and we need to state its domain now we can easily see the domain here of the inverse it's when x is greater than negative 3 and actually you know if you look along the x-axis it will give you the domain if you look along the y-axis it will give you the range so I can also see that the domain of the inverse is the same as the range of the original function which is greater than negative 3 so its domain of this inverse is x is greater than or equal to negative 3 part c says to solve this equation that the function equals its inverse now if we use our sketch where does the function equal its inverse this point here now we could try and write f of x x squared minus 3 equals uh, root x plus 3 so we could do that but you'll find that it, that will be really difficult to try and solve so if we we just actually wrote them out like this equals root x plus 3 where you've got square both sides you know and then it's just too hard but what we know about this place along the y line y equals x is that the function x equals x the inverse equals x because they're on that line so we can either solve f of x equals x or we can solve the inverse equals x because it's the line y equals x we'll do both we should get the same answer so f of x equals x x squared minus 3 equals x move the x across x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0 I'm pretty sure that will factorize to give me um, negative 3 and plus 1 no that doesn't factorize so we're going to have to use the quadratic equation so a equals 1 b equals negative 1 c equals 3 or oh, I suppose we could complete the square couldn't we so negative b so negative minus 1 plus or minus square root b squared negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c so c is actually negative as well all over 2a so if we do that now we get two solutions and in fact you could probably even um, use the solve function on your calculator but one of the solutions x is negative but we can see that the solution must be positive because it's over this side it's not over here yeah so maybe they cross again here but we've restricted the range so it won't go any further than that and probably the other value is less than zero anyway value of x so as a third we get one plus so we take the positive one root 13 over 2 if we do it that way so let's also solve it the other way see if we get the same solution so that would be the inverse equals x so the inverse is root x plus 3 equals x so we square both sides so it's x plus 3 equals x squared so it's going to x squared minus x minus 3 you can see you get exactly the same thing yeah so we're going to get the same solution right you should now be able to do exercise 2d on pages 38 to 39